And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this segment, I'm going to be giving a quick free agency grading. And, you know, this is going to include some trades as well as it's mainly going to be free agent signings as opposed to trades. But we might as well get the big trade out of the way. DeJounte going over to the Pelicans in exchange for Larry Nance and a couple of picks as well as there was one other player in the trade deal. Let me go ahead and pull up the trade details of that just one second. Let me go ahead and see. But, yes, so Larry Nance Jr., Dyson Dyson Daniels, and 2025 first-round pick along with the 2027 first-round pick. So I give it an A-plus for the Pelicans. The fact that they weren't able, that they didn't need to give up Brandon Ingram for this trade is fantastic. Now for the Hawks, I give it a C. Because why the heck aren't you pressuring the Pelicans to get rid of Brandon Ingram? <laughs> that's really like the big. That's really my big complaint with this trade coming in from the from the Hawks' perspective. Because it's like there's no way that you can make this team a good team. Like what? What is that? But that is just me. So in now we will go ahead and go into some free agent signings. So we have Paul George to the Sixers now. Obviously, the Clippers, they let Paul George walk because they weren't willing to give him so much money, but they let him go to the, well, the 76ers decided to pick him up. Now, I'm not really a big fan of how much money they're giving him in the max deal because they still have to, like, um, this, that, that's just a lot of money to be giving Paul George, in my opinion, an aging player who, not only that, has suffered through several injuries, but still... In hindsight, I will give it um, between, you know, a B plus and an A minus. It's right in between there. So if you want to say A minus or B plus, I have no problems with either or. That's my grade for Paul George's move to the 76ers. Next, we have KCP deciding to go over to the Orlando Magic. I The Orlando Magic, they needed some more three-point shooters as well as a solid defender and i believe that you know kcp being a three and d option while they didn't get clay thompson kcp is a solid pickup and i do think that obviously you know three years 66 million dollars with a third year player option it's i think it's a no-brainer for the orlando magic and they have a lot they had a lot of cap space so they were able to use the money on someone like him and the bigger plus here may be like that Call what KCP brings on the defensive side of the ball as opposed to if they were to get Klay Thompson, they would just get a solid shooter. And while Klay Thompson was a good defender in his prime, he's no longer a good defender in his prime. And pairing him with Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac, who recently signed a big contract, Jonathan Isaac I'm talking about, with the Orlando Magic as well, I feel like this is a great deal, honestly. Now, um, would you guys be interested in listening to the deals with Jonathan Isaac's contract. I'll go ahead and pull them up right now just in case you guys are interested. Let me just go ahead and get the and get the information on Jonathan Isaac's new contract. Just give me one second. Now, it was a I believe it was a 5-year contract. Yes, it was, and it was for $84 million. Now, that doesn't really seem like a lot when you look at everyone else's contract and every other All-Stars contract. However, Jonathan Isaac didn't really play much. And giving it to someone who doesn't really play that much doesn't really seem ideal. However, I'm not going to say that he doesn't bring value. But I have I grade this move, this free agent signing, like KCP's free agent signing. I give it an A for the Orlando Magic because the defense and the three-point shooting, fantastic. Next, James Harden um, re-signing with the Clippers. Now, I don't really agree with the fact that they chose Harden over Paul George because I feel like, you know, Harden is a little bit, he's no longer the same monster that he was before. Meanwhile, Paul George is still being a lot more consistent than James Harden. But in the regular season, at least, you know, James Harden is a very, very solid pickup. And he's still a solid player and is still good enough to run the offense as well as set up plays for his own teammates. Now, I give this a grade of a B- minus simply because I do not like James Harden in the postseason. In the postseason, James Harden always just 
underperforms. Every single postseason, he underperforms, and it's really no secret. So just wanted to point that out. Next, we have Chris Paul to the Spurs. Again, one of my favorite free agent signings so far because it just pairs up so well with Victor Wembanyama, and just it's a great fit for Paul um for Chris Paul who you know while he did get waived by the Golden State Warriors what's really crazy to me is how Chris Paul got waived twice but he's still a phenomenal athlete and he's still able to get deals despite the fact that he's that he gets waived which really it surprises me but anyways I think this is the first A+, plus because Victor Wembanyama is going to be great under Chris Paul, with Chris Paul, you know, um, running the offense and all of these things. So, A+, plus, without a doubt. Next is Cade Cunningham signing his extension. Remember, he signed a five-year, $226 million extension with the Detroit Pistons, and he is a great pickup for the Pistons, arguably the only good player that the Pistons have on the team. And I give this an A. Really, like, I mean, they just really needed the talent. And because of just how bad the Pistons roster is as a whole, this is just a great pick. Next is Jonas Valanciunas. He ended up signing with the Wizards for three years, $30 million. I give this a C- minus because I don't really think that is... I don't really think... I don't... I'm not a big fan of him being... The, the center for the Wizards. And I'm also just not a big fan of him at center in general. He's not a very good rim protector. And he did have, you know, that one ridiculous shooting performance before the league ended up um, shutting down because of COVID. But really, aside from that, there's really nothing memorable that Jonas has done, in my opinion. Now, he, and what really makes this even worse, in my opinion, is that he's going to take minutes away from Alexander Saar, who is the big rookie that I really thought should have been drafted number one by the Atlanta Hawks. So we understand that the Wizards, they aren't going to win anything. So why is it that they aren't going to try to develop Alexander Saar to be that great center by giving him some minutes as opposed to just, you know, take, signing another center that will give him, that is going to take away the minutes. But that's just me. Next is Najee Marshall to the Dallas Mavericks. I don't really need to talk about this that much because I think this is a solid pickup. Three years, $27 million. I give this a B plus. Next, Derek Jones Jr. to the Clippers. Now, I really, this is unfortunate for Dallas because they ended up losing a valuable asset to the team. But it, the Clippers, they ended up getting him for three years and $30 million. Now, it's hard not to view this deal through the lens of Paul George's departure, though. And Jones is essentially Paul George's replacement, really. And replacing someone like that, like Paul George, with someone like Derrick Jones, you know, it's a downgrade, like, period. So I give it a B. Like, they did a pretty good job trying to replace him, but, you know, it's not all that. Next is Andre Drummond to the 76ers for two years on a $10-plus million contract. And he was the first player who switched teams after the free agency window opened on Sunday. He's a substantial upgrade to the backup five spot for the Philadelphia 76ers. I give it an A. Now, remember, Andre Drummond used to put up 20 and 20 several times. Now, uh, <laughs> they weren't really that valuable 2020 games, unfortunately enough, because, you know, he didn't really play for a solid team. But coming off the bench, I think he'd be good. I think he'd be all right. Now... Let's move on to, obviously, you know, he is a Brooklyn Nets legend as well. Cannot forget about when he threw up the deuces against the Miami Heat and in homage to Tyreek Hill. But aside from that, speaking of the Miami Heat, Kevin Love ended up returning to the Miami Heat on a two-year, eight-plus million dollar contract. And his outside shooting is definitely like something to command attention if you are the Heat. So he is a very solid role player. Not the same kind of player that he was on the Timberwolves or on the Cavs. But I do still give it an A because of the value that he brings with the spacing for the Miami Heat. Next, we have Eric Gordon going to the 76ers. Now, I believe he could be a very solid option in the starting lineup as well. He is one of the players that has a 50-point game in the regular season, which not many players have and is honestly one of the most shocking 50-point games in recent memory. 
and but I give this a B plus. He is a very solid shooter, and he is going to help the team be you know space the floor out because that's really his job. Next is Mason Plumlee going to the Phoenix Suns. I give this a B plus because Mason Plumlee he works hard, he plays hard, he gets the rebounds, he plays the defense. He is a very solid pickup, and he won't join the Suns looking for a ton of shots. But you know it's not really. It's not going to be a huge upgrade over Drew Eubanks, but at the minimum, it's a win because again, it's a one it's a one year contract via uh, Woj. The details of the contract, however, aren't really all that, but it's a veteran minimum salary, so that's what we presume. Next is Kevin Porter Jr. going to the Clippers, and I give this a. I'm a little bit biased. I think I'm not even going. I won't even lie to you guys, but. I give this a D. This is, it's for two years with a player option in the second year. And it was the biggest surprise, arguably one of the biggest surprises for free agency. And in my opinion, you know, he spent time, you know, he played overseas the last season following a plea agreement stemming from domestic violence incidents. Now, obviously, you know, you can go ahead and look up all of that stuff. And Porter had a tense exit from the Cavs. And he left the game early with the Houston Rockets after arguing with an assistant coach. Now, the fact that he's arguing with the coach, in my opinion, is just it really isn't a good presence in the locker room. And he might be a very solid player, averaging 19 points, 5 assists, and shooting 36% from 3. But that production came against came with a really bad team in Houston and again being a problem in the locker room I'm just not a big fan of it so I give it a D next we have the final one on this list so far Luke Cornett returning to the Celtics I give this a B plus because obviously he did help the Celtics win a championship and I cannot hate on somebody for helping the Celtics win a championship so that is the free agency grades for day one Now we will go into, in the next segment, talk about the free agency grades for day two. And I will be right back after this short break. Be sure to stay tuned.